103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOCO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, December 20th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes or Dower 5. And we use, as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. I want to be the very best. And you are, Wombat. You Thank really you. are. Thank you, <laughs> Our guests today are Doubtfire, Boudreau, uh, George One, George Two, uh, Brooklyn and Buffalo. Hello, Georges. Both nice. originally from New York. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Uh, this particular time, we'll be talking about the war at Christmas. Nice. If, you're, if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheists, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for 10 years? Did you know that one, but I've been a fan of it since I was a child. And really, I haven't really been paying attention to the show that much, but I have been mm-hmm. playing the video game at Since least you were a child. Once every two years. Every once every it's two only years. Been my favorite's years. Red. <laughs> Sun and Moon just came out. Love that. And I have like a level 100 Charmander. I know I never no, it. no. I just no. really enjoy you, the, the cute little fire on his tail. Yeah. It's great. It's really just keep, keep flipping those channels. You'll find it eventually. <laughs> but we'll tell you more how you can find it after the mid-show break. And if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments during the show. Uh, Wombat, what do we have today? Ho, ho, ho. Mary, what are we going to do about Christmas, guys? So, like, we decided, <laughs> you know, every year a bunch of atheists yeah. get together in a round table yeah. and figure out what we can do against Christmas. Yeah. we got to do the war mm-hmm. against Christmas. Do whatever we can to make sure yeah. no one ever celebrates Christmas ever yeah. again. And we the decided Grinch couldn't we'll, join us today, but no, we'll no, try we'll to work without we'll, him. <laughs> we'll share our video out for the world to take notes on and, and see how we mm-hmm. like succeed this year, if any year. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we're going to be talking about like what are we doing as atheists talking about the holidays and what are our plans for Christmas or uh, the holiday season in general. And uh, before we get into it, I'd like to do a quick, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Brooklyn, George, how you doing? What's going on with you? I'm doing about great. I, I'm doing just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You know, I'm re- I'm I'm recovered just about all from surgery and. Uh, That's so that. good to hear. And I'm also getting myself a, a, a doctor who is not a. Um, Are you getting a new doctor? Yes, I am. I am cool. getting nice. a new doctor who is not a Trump supporter, and I am. Oh, so happy about you. that. Mm-hmm. The hey, only you know, one pro science is better. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, we'll yep. go straight up to Doubtfire. Doubtfire, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good, nice. man. Yep. Tell me what's going on in your household. Is that what? Do you got the Christmas tree up? Do you not do the Christmas tree? Former Jova witness. Like, what's going on here? Maybe I'm prying too early. But eh, like, what's too lazy the uh, pizzazz? The <laughs> <laughs> too lazy. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll get. I want to get into this more, but uh, let's head in straight into Boudreaux. Boudreaux, how you doing? I'm good, man. I, I just started. Uh, let's see. Uh, Friday was my last day of work until January fourth. So, same here same yeah. here yeah and it's gonna be a you have a yeah. whole family though so like you got a dog you got you have things to do yeah. i'm just here two with dogs my cat. two kids <laughs> well that's all right that's cats are work too we yeah, have yeah, our true, christmas stuff we put up our christmas stuff in july and, <laughs> and we put it up before thanksgiving this year just because covid you know right Why not? right yeah, absolutely. A lot of neighbors did that. I saw some guys who never even took down their lights from, you know, last December when COVID like initially hit. They're just like, yeah, nah, wow. I need this joy in my life. And it was nice to see, you know, in July, just like, no, Christmas lights, screw it. Buffalo George, I want to know everything about you. You're you're the new face for the show and actually not too new of a face for me. Uh, would you mind telling us about uh, 
where you are, where you're coming from, who you are, all that stuff. Uh, well, I'm in the outside of Lexington, Kentucky, about 15 miles outside, uh, sort of in the country. Cool. And uh, what I've been doing lately is more walking in the woods and enjoying my religion, which is nature. Nice. Uh, in, my, in, in my cathedral, which is the woods. And fortunately, we have... Uh, uh, a neighbor, a very friendly neighbor who has a 300 acre uh, uh, free range cattle farm and we're permitted to walk there freely and my wife and I do that uh, at least once a day, sometimes more than that. So that's about the only thing I've been doing lately that's uh, noteworthy. What's your uh, relationship than... to any of these people on the show? Like who, who, who brought you here? What's going on here? Uh, well, there's Eric there who's my, my great son-in-law <laughs> and uh, and uh, the host of the uh, summit group, which I yes. expect you know about, uh, and uh, yeah, and I enjoyed the topic. I I enjoy pursuing these questions about religion. Used to be, uh, you know, born and raised in a religious situation, Catholic in my case, but uh, oh, okay. started asking questions in my early twenties, and and um, I'm a scientist, so. Nice. Is it makes sense to me, and uh, it always has. So that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Okay. Very cool. And then Very we'll cool. round it off with my best friend Larry. How you doing? Doing well. Staying in, staying safe. Uh, <laughs> the the whole country is really baking in this uh, COVID right now, and half of yeah. the highest cities uh, that are experiencing the worst. Uh, uh, situations in COVID are in Tennessee. Uh, yeah. they, we're just not taking it seriously as, as a population and we're paying the price. Absolutely. So just trying to stay in, keep the spirits mm -hmm. up and uh, doing what we can. And I'll say, I'll round this out because I think that's a really good comment. When we started this COVID thing, like we even did like a quick discussion on like, you know, like, hey, what's the deal with face masks? Should we be wearing face masks, all this stuff? And I think like my, my go-to thing that I was saying is like, we should take precautions, but we should also be very observant to see what works and what doesn't work and be willing to ask some hard questions about like, okay, there's way more death rates in, I'm just gonna say Italy, it may not be Italy. Uh, it's definitely not Italy, but like it's more death rates in Italy. What are they doing wrong? No death rates in Ze New Zealand. Let's learn from New Zealand and immediately institute those rules. Let's do what we can to sure. figure out what doesn't work, what does work, but we'll take precautions in the meanwhile. And I feel like, if we go through this whole process and just politicize everything to the point where it's like, okay, it's over, you know, COVID like naturally, maybe we just got rid of it, but we learned nothing when COVID-20 is just gonna rock us in the exact same manner. Like we just won't mm -hmm. learn anything. And I feel like right now, <laughs> <laughs> America's doing absolutely the worst. And it's such a shame. It's such a shame. And it's what do you, what do you mean we pale face? Uh, <laughs> what do we mean? We're, <laughs> what do we mean we? we're all trying, but I mean yeah. a lot of us are trying, yeah. a lot of us aren't. Yeah, as a as a country, we are doing so bad. Like we're getting detention and we're on the borderline of getting expelled. But like I just hope you know, we can learn from this because we need to start. We've had, we've been needing to start. And the fact that like a vaccine can come out and we're trying to take like instant credit for it, it's like, ooh, scientists were trying to figure this out well ahead of time before you came in and were like, you need to figure this out. It was like, no. Anyway, I want to, I want to, I'd say, hey, um, like I said, I want to say happy. I want to say chipper. We're talking about the holidays today, guys. Um, I am excited because uh, like Eric, or Boudreaux, excuse me, <laughs> like Boudreaux, our good friend Boudreaux, I'm also off work and I have time now to reflect on a really, really crazy year, but also be find time to be thankful for uh, just a moment of reprieve because we had been working nonstop since February trying to make face mask material for like all of Tennessee. And like, finally, it's like, okay, we, we hit all of our, you know, deadlines. And now it's just like, who, what can we do now? And I think what made me feel really happy is I came to work um, or I came home uh, last Friday and there was a little package on my doorknob. And it was one of my neighbors who gave me like a box of cookies and cat toys for my cat. And I'm like, man, this is cool. Like 
you know how it's crazy it's it's just been working home working home working home but there's other people out there and they were considering for me and it's like now it's time for me to think about like oh what kind of gift can i return for this what can i can I do for my neighbors and and still stay socially distant but like also appreciate the fact that i am living in a community that's like very positive and supportive of me and i think that's what this holiday season's like for me that's how i celebrate my holidays just like what can i do back for my friends and family my neighbors who who i love and i want them to come back with love at me. I want to do a round table discussion on like, what are you guys doing to destroy Christmas? Cause that's what I'm doing to destroy Christmas. <laughs> Being nice to people and loving and sharing reciprocity, reciprocity and all that stuff called my family. That's how you destroy Christmas. Let's go to Scott. Scott, how are you going to destroy Christmas? What's your war on Christmas? Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, try to be as positive as I can and try to be as loving as I can and take your advice and example. And yeah, that should really make people angry, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That'll make them real. <laughs> that'll show them what's up. That'll, that'll show them what's it. up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, you know, you're really interesting because um, I'm, my mom is Jehovah Witness. And even mm-hmm. yesterday she was texting me and like, so what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like reminding her, it's like, mom, you don't celebrate Christmas. Like, I want to celebrate <laughs> gift anyway. You can't be, a, you, can't be a, you can't be a cheating Jehovah Witness when there's only 14,000 people oh. going to heaven, right? <laughs> you got to like try to try to get on the A-list at least. But, uh, you know, I've gotten very used to not being overzealous with my celebrations. Are you in more or less in the same boat? Scott? Yeah, I, um, you know, if I'm really honest, because I, you know, since I was a Jehovah's Witnesses, Christmas and these holidays were never, they were kind of weeded out of my life way back when I was. So coming out of it, it, I never like ran back to Christmas or ran back to celebrating these holidays, so to speak, because it was never an emotional anchor for me to begin with. So I don't know. It's, it is what it is. And I, I kind of understand why people get emotional and they get really, it's really important for them. Sure. And so, but you know, if I'm an atheist, I'm, I don't, I don't care. Like you do you, you know, I'll do me live and let live, but there it, it's nice to have a, a time of day set aside to be especially nice to each other and this and that. So I don't have a problem with it. And I, and I play along with it. I just don't go overzealous about it. Right. Like I don't have Christmas trees and stuff like that. Not that that's overzealous, but I don't even get that far with it. So sure. It is what like, it is. It, it won't look like Christmas in New York in my house. I do have like a, a plant that I put some tinsel around and stuff, but you know, that's more or less, as far as I'm, I'm about to go to, I'm, in, I'm more or less in the same boat, but I also like the idea of like, Hey, you can celebrate it. If you, you can go crazy. If you want to go crazy, I'll support you. If you want to go crazy. I'm just like, I just don't have the energy to do that. Right. <laughs> Myself, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have the same question for Brooklyn, George. Uh, you now you were raised atheist, but you do have a Jewish background. So like, that's correct. Han- yes. It's, it's Hanukkah more like, the appropriate analogy here for you? Or? It is not, you see, because um, now you heard it here first, so I'm going to say it. Uh, oh. In the in the Jewish context, Hanukkah is not a really big time holiday. Hmm. So, okay. and, and the the irony in you know, the way I was brought up is that every once in a every every year or two, so and so, my parents would get a Christmas tree. And put presents under it, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Which is funny because, you know, it's not in my background. It's not in their tradition. It's, you know, but they would they would do it. So it's like there's a Christmas spirit of some kind. And it's, it's a sort of an American thing because Christians are the majority of Americans. And um, all these people are doing all this stuff. So can I get with it? Well, mm. yeah, but no. You know, and it's uh, it, it's it's sort of sort of a strange place to be, and sometimes I just wish the whole thing would go away, you know, sure. blow over. But I bought myself some presents. I I, I did. I, I bought myself some goodies. I have bought myself some presents too. What's the best thing you got for yourself? Just gonna ask this real quick. Um. Well, I got some computer stuff. The, the, believe it or not, the best thing I got was a tire pump. Oh. Okay. 
Hey, I got a tire pump too. Hey, I mean, hey, small <laughs> world. I totally did. I got one that looks like a drill. It looks super, super cool. I'm just because the last one I had yeah. broke. When I had three flat tires, the one that I had, the only one that I had broke when I had three flats because I thought it worked, but instead I was blowing air out of my tires. So I heard the hiss, but I wasn't looking at the tire. <laughs> yes. pressure. And I'm like, this works. Third tire, second tire. This works. Third tire. This works. It's not working. Why is my tire? Go- Why is my whole car careening to one side? I'm like, oh man. Well, well unlike, sucks. unlike um, uh, a lot of people, I have to live with something before I know whether I want it or not, or whether it's any good or not, you know, and sometimes I just have to buy something. It's like, I'm scientific. I want to know how it works. And, um, you know, so that's what's behind my having bought a a number of things in my life is just curiosity. Yeah. You have to live with something to know what it's like. That's sort of like Scott's situation where it's like, I never really had the, 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 in your face traditional green and red and and silver and gold christmas so like lacking it i don't feel like i'm really missing anything and like from my perspective i've had really really christian christmases and then the low-key hey man just do what you got to do here's a present have fun here's here's your amazon account and your own credit card get whatever you want want. and i'm like i kind of like the second one better (laughs) though like the main thing for me it was just like hanging out with family not so much like the purchase and the and the in-your-face commercial and the terrible christian not christian the terrible christmas music that comes out each new year some new Mm -hmm. country stark figured out a new rendition of silent night and i have to listen to him belt it out over the fm every day like, oh, and you know what that, <laughs> a it. lot of the a lot of that christmas music was written by jewish people mm-hmm. hey mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. nice wow. True. yeah and you know the story behind irving berlin's writing uh, uh that his famous christmas song right no throw but, it out because he song. because he was jew uh, uh living in brooklyn and he wanted to express his Christmas cheer, but not have it be in a Christian sense. So if you listen to the lyrics of White Christmas, uh, you can see that coming right out. Sure. Well, <laughs> talk to me. There's is that a lot a, of secular um, attributes of Christmas that, that are non-religious. Now, Santa Claus is a good good example of that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Originally came Christmas from St. Nick, pretty. but now it's just like this mascot that's like so generally appealing for everybody. Right. Like, you sucked all the religion but out. No, no you know, religious overlays like at all. Exactly. Was and I think Saint that's cool. Nick, was St. Nick uh, based on a real saint? Yeah. 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 Who yeah. gave out oranges and was not fat or like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, the original St. Nick was kind of a gangster. He would go down. So I guess back then it was okay, but he really liked giving away oranges to the point where he would like throw them into people's homes. Like that would be his thing. He'd go down the street, pull out a sock <laughs> full of oranges and throw it into people's homes. Like, Hey, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he was God, and if he would be like, "Did that guy just throw an orange in my house?" What yeah. the hell? But back then, it was it's like, "Oh, than bananas, oh, it's better than yeah. <laughs> or, or tomatoes." Well, yeah, in <laughs> order, mm, in order to, it. in order to give away oranges, you got to get the oranges in the first place. Well, where did. the hell did he get oranges in the middle of the right? winter? I don't know. I guess it was like a, <laughs> it was like one of those things where you're just like, hey, one, it's food. Two, it's exotic. You know, like I'm not going to yeah. complain against this. So, yeah. But yeah. he had to get them. The you trade know? routes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're going to Buffalo, George. George, I, George, I want to know, like, what are your plans for this Christmas? And what's your plans for destroying it? Ah, uh, I don't, I guess I've never thought very much about destroying it, but, uh, well, I mean, that's what you invited like, here I, for, right? I, mean, just... I like the, uh, I like the, um, oh, the happiness that comes out of it, especially the way in which the kids view it. And, uh, so a lot of my focus is on doing that. And I, I enjoyed uh, buying gifts online this year for the grandkids, really. How do you buy kids? How do you buy kids gifts? I have no idea what even high schoolers like these days. Like I try. You find find out from their parents what, what, what they sort of like need. And then you try to try to take that in with what uh, you think you'd uh, enjoy giving them. Now, here's the thing. So, the parents are going to tell you, like, they need socks, they need underwear, and you're like... <laughs> yeah, but what kind, what, what kind of socks? What kind of socks? <laughs> they and, don't want socks. They never <laughs> want socks. They never, Especially ever want socks. Especially girls, you know, they, they have special uh, um, 
uh, likes and dislikes when it comes to socks. And so you can oh. work on that and it works. Okay. You just, then you go to the internet and you say crazy socks and, and you get all kinds of possibilities. Okay. 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 And yeah, but I, I, I think be... that Christmas to, Christmas to me is a, uh, is a, something that a lot of people enjoy and it, especially in a time like this and in, in the dull winter days when the sun's not shining brightly, I just kind of like it. I think Christmas as a grandparent, grandparent, right, is way, yeah. way, way more fun than like Christmas as an adult that's already just grown up, right? Like that's the boat I'm in. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm about to get out of that boat, but I'm still in the boat of just like, hey, I just barely grew up. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just like, okay, I can buy whatever I want. What's the big deal? But when you think about like, oh, but I can buy kids whatever they want and I don't have to raise them. <laughs> there you like go. I send I them just, home. <laughs> I can send them home. I was like, oh, well, then here, have four Nintendo Switches. I got dispensable income. I don't care. That's your parents' problem. <laughs> I want to be the rock star. Yeah, that could be So really this year we can go one step further with that. You know, you can oh, buy them it. stocking stuffers and you can take the stockings and put them on their front porch in a box. Okay. And uh, then get back in your car and go home. Very cool. You could be like literal Secret Santa, basically. And no, well, then you have a Zoom where everyone opens their stockings together. So that works. <laughs> that's super, super sweet. Okay. That's sweet. Okay, cool. Hey, Boudreau, I got some Star Wars info for you, but of course, Ooh. I want to know what your holiday plans are, and then we can go straight into that. What What is your means <sighs> of destroying Christmas? Well, I plan to, you know, do the usual eat babies and and uh, and all that, and sing Satan songs and uh, the fun stuff. But uh, no, for me, uh, Chris, my mom is just a she's a giver. She's a spender. She loves to to uh, spoil spoil people, and she spoiled us as kids so much that I was left with Christmas. To me, was way too many presents. Loving it, like just as a kid, I just. You know, we, we always got way too much and, uh, I loved it as it, you know, it, it was star Wars things and like uh, GI Joe, all, all of it. So star Wars, Boudreaux, have you ever, I know. That? Have you ever thought, no, like, no, if it didn't exist. What would you be right now? It's just like, you'd be an accountant somewhere on like <laughs> Tuscany <laughs> or something a, like that. Probably be a star Trek fan. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shame. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, so I don't, I carried, I carried that, the, the memories of that, um, into my uh, being a parent and, you know, I love spoiling, you know, Kristen gets mad at me, Kristen's George's daughter and, and she gets mad at me cause I, t I want to spend way too much on the kids. And so I usually have a few surprises for them to open that even mom doesn't know about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but cool. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a great time of year I, outside of religion completely to me. It's, it's about it's about giving, you know, that's nice. Yeah. So, and spending time with family too, I think really, or yeah. however you can, right. In these times. Right. right. Uh, I will ask this one weird question before we move up to doubter five, but like, I know in your heart, you want your kids to be able to play as many musical instruments as possible. Right. Like, what is the temptation to buy them instruments that secretly you want? <laughs> and being like, but it's for the kids. They'll be able to play it by the time they grow up to be able to hold this giant jumbo guitar. It'll be an heirloom. So like, really, it's a double gift, really, when you think mm. about it. Like, how do you how do you manage that? And is there a conversation with uh, Kristen to like even things out? Just like, no, you can't get them four giant metal flying v's that's not going to count <laughs> that that one's tough because the the uh, vivian started with piano which Kristen played hmm. plays and and now she's on flute which none of us play um so you know i've got guitars and drums and everything based down here but they've they haven't really taken an interest in it if they if they show an interest in it yeah you believe me i'm gonna get a uh <laughs> <laughs> like here this is for the kid it's this uh <laughs> this les paul custom yeah uh, okay okay it silver burst just just yeah. happens to be silver burst it has a beer <laughs> dispenser but trust me i'm not gonna let them try it until they're 21 right right okay Doubter five you mind give us a walkthrough about your christmas plans for destroying uh the holidays oh it's it's simple uh, if somebody says uh, Merry Christmas to me, I say Merry Christmas back. If they say Happy Hanukkah to me, I say Happy Hanukkah back. If they say Devious. Happy Holidays, I say Happy Holidays back. It's, it's you know, straightforward and it gets to the point. Doesn't Brilliant. Anybody. Well, the thing Brilliant. Is, Brilliant. If, if That's the master happy, plan. 
Hanukkah to me. I know that mm -hmm. they're celebrating Hanukkah, and I wish them a happy Hanukkah. Yeah, it's you no know, skin off not. your back. <laughs> right, I don't care. But uh, what, one thing that we do a little different here is uh, we, we put tree, I mean, lights up around the living room, uh, not specifically on the tree, but around, you know, on, on uh, the curtains, uh, the entertainment system. And uh, last year, from last year to this year, we left them on the curtain all year long and really enjoyed them. So nice. we may do that, you know, just continuing on going forward. But yeah, it's it, a really nice effect. It is always kind of sad when you have to put away the Christmas decorations because in mm. the back of your head, you're like, but I live here and I'm not hurting anyone if I keep them up. So, like, <laughs> what's going on here? It's like, I know it's a custom, but I like the way this looks. Right. Um, I do have family that's Muslim. And when it's um, Ramadan, I'll be like, Hey, happy Eid, happy, you know, Eid Mubarak or yeah. whatever. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that at grocery stores when it's like around Ramadan time. And then people will be like, yeah, Eid Mubarak. And then someone will go like, are you Muslims? Like, no, I'm an atheist. Like, oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> for, the <most> part, <laughs> for the most part, they just enjoy that someone else is like appreciating Recognized them. It. Yeah. The weirdest thing, I'll say this before we go to our break, is um, when I used to do uh, uh, SC or uh, Socratic examinations up in Kentucky, there was a walking path at the University of Kentucky, and there would be uh, a, a lady who would always be out when I was out, and she'd wear like all black and she'd be in the full uh, hajib. Is that is that the right term for it? Uh, anyway, when she when she walked past me, I'd be like, hey, Eden Bark, and she would respond back as customary with like this 10, like with the full on 10 line uh, Islamic slogan. That's just like, blah, 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 blah. but like happy and smiling. And I'm like, I don't know what any of these words mean, but I know she's like, Hey, thank you very much. And you have a happy holidays too. <laughs> Bless you yeah. and all that stuff. I'm like, <laughs> all right, awesome. That's cool with me. But she would like, remember me. And like every single time she see me just like straight out, like, oh, no, no. it was like, Oh, cool. It's that same lady again. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is like, it's, it's no skin off my back to, to improve her cheer and her holiday cheer. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's just cool to dial into that and make things better generally as a world and more accepting and all that stuff. So I love that. Larry, we're at the bottom of the half hour. Can you believe it already? Oh no. Can it be? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the digital free thought radio hour on WOZO radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM WOZO radio Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Daughter 5 and today is Sunday, December 20th, 2020. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! That's right. Uh, with us on the show today, we have uh, Doubtfire, uh, George, Buffalo, Boudreaux, and of course, co regular co-host, uh, Ty. Uh, Squirtle, Wombat. Squirtle. Squirtle. <laughs> uh, where do you want to pick up, Wombat? So we just came back from the commercial break, and now it's time for everyone's favorite game, Who's That Pokemon? Oh no, uh, okay. there's no Pokemon here. Where'd it go? Where is it? Where is Where's the, the love? love? Where is the love? The love. <laughs> the love. The love. The Buffalo George is like, love. I have no idea what's going on. Right. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> what's Sorry happening? <laughs> so we are. So we have a segment of the show where we go over listener feedback from last week's episode. Last week's episode, of course, was logic can't prove anything. And we actually had a really cool conversation about the nature and limitations of logic. It's a great thing to come up with for proofs, but it's not a really adequate means to prove anything. If anything, it's just a good way to show that we can't be certain about anything. Like the only thing that we can't be certain about is uncertainty. And so uh, it inspired a lot of really interesting comments in that video, and we're gonna go over them today. Uh, Dada's Trading Room, all the way from Poland, he says, logic can lead to evidence. Break it up. Oh, my bad, my bad. Dada's Trading Room, all the you way from Poland. Up. Still breaking up? No, you're okay now. Okay, cool. So Dada's Trading Room, all the way from Poland, says, logic can lead to evidence, and evidence does lead to proof. 
but we can't prove. It's proving is a lot harder. Uh, he also follows up with a belief, a claim, or a model of reality. Oh, wow. He really, really well defines his terms with like some uh, a very good definition. But basically, he came up with a defense for saying, like, hey, logic is a good way to lead to evidence, and evidence does lead to proof, but that's a different thing to prove with a V something. And I thought that was really interesting. What do you think about that, Buffalo George? Do you think you can prove something with logic? Can you like? I sit don't down care. And... I don't Buffalo care. Buffalo George. Buffalo George. Oh, <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm walking over here. What are you doing? Yeah, I think. Well, I'm I'm a scientist, and <clears throat> the main thing I have been for my entire career. Um, and uh, what I've come to learn the most is that we never know everything about anything. And so maybe that's an answer to your question. Can you prove anything? And, uh, and I'm not so sure you can, but you could conclude, certainly. Okay. And logic yes, leads absolutely. to conclusion. Yes. And that's the way I operate. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe anything, really. Um, I, I conclude with the best evidence I can gather. Can I poke at that? You, I would say like you don't believe anything with absolute certainty, but there are obviously things that you are convinced are true even with your own infallibilities. Would you say that's more accurate? Or would you have an issue with that? I'd have an issue with that. Talk to me. Well, for example, the example I usually use is that, you know, gravity is the most obvious thing to just about anybody that thinks about it, and we don't understand gravity. Okay. You know, okay. science does not understand the basis of gravity, and you can apply that to almost anything. Uh, the... The properties of water, for example, there are still some properties of water that are not understood. So I, I don't think we have to. We have to, uh, we have, and as an experimentalist, I depend upon experimentation to, to arrive at my conclusions whenever I can. Uh, and so we have to just do the best we can and, and advance the, uh, the understanding in that way. Okay, I'm going to throw this out again. I'll massage my words a little differently. We don't have an absolute idea about anything, but we at least have working conclusions about how things operate where we can like still, you know, know the consequences of our actions and, and interact with things in a, in a beneficial way for mutual benefit. Is that something you would agree yeah, with? Yeah, I like working conclusions. Working conclusions. Larry, what'd you think? You had your hand up. What's up? Yes, I was having a conversation with someone recently, uh, and they were saying that, I was saying that uh, absolute certainty is overrated. And they said, well, science, <laughs> science is always absolutely sure about their facts. And Not I told true. them, no, no. Uh, matter of fact, we reserve our highest rewards and most pre prestigious rewards for those who can over, uh, overturn our previous assumptions with absolutely. new information. I mean, uh, we don't um, assume absolute certainty over what our, what our discoveries are. So um, I like so high credibility. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like the idea of like, hey, you know, science is about rewarding people who overturn science, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is science is inherently a pursuit to figure out why the last guy who said something was wrong, <laughs> which and, is sort of go yeah. for it. Go. Yeah, and, and the method is the method is retesting. Yeah, and if if something in the science says is overturned, it's only overturned by more science, mm -hmm. not by religious claims. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is a there's an unfortunate conflation between well, you just trust science, but science is what you use to correct science. So how do you know? So if you can't trust science, how do you even test reason. this whole system? But really, science is what is knowledge. Like it is not just something that's on the shelf of knowledge; it is the shelf. And so, like and all method, of our. We, mm -hmm. And we break it down to different methods, sure. But like, there's a lot of observations there. So there's some empirical studies. There's philosophy. There's mathematics, where you just have incredibly well-defined terms. It's a big shelf of knowledge. And we can't throw that out, but we can add to it. And it tends to be that when we use this shelf of stuff, it, it leads us to the best conclusions. And I think, demonstrably, that makes it the best method to, to come to conclusions. And we can always improve it and we can take stuff off the shelf. We can, we're willing to adapt it. Is it at the best where it's at right now? No, but can we keep improving it? Yes, and that's what makes it better than a strict dogma that doesn't change, that assumes that it knows everything. Boudreaux, I'm gonna throw a question out at you. Um, you know, we talked about this last week, but like the idea of like, can you, can you prove, so uh, eco, Ecocentric Homestead asked, there's no, 
I'm not aware of any logical arguments for the existence of God because I think they're all philosophical, not logical. In your head, is there a difference between philosophical philosophy and logic? Mm. Like a oh, philosophical a argument versus a logical argument. Buja, what do you think? So I think I've said before on the on the podcast that one of my big regrets in uh, in my education in college, I never took a philosophy class. And I, I kind of kicked myself because I feel like I'm missing a lot of the pieces and, and maybe to help the pieces would be needed to help answer this question properly. But to me, you know, philosophy, you know, I, I it, it's, it's, thinking about thinking, talking about, you know, yeah. how these thoughts are put together. So logic can, certainly comes in there. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I guess my experience with logic is more on George's side of thing, more, more scientific, more testable, you know, things you can, but I mean, I think you can use a lot of the same tools in, in uh, philosophy, like, you know, logical fallacies and, um, you know, cause you're, you're, you you don't control what you what you understand in your head, right? You know, mm. Someone makes an argument and it, it clicks, and you're like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, I get it. Oh, that makes sense. I'm, I agree." But you're not really in control of that, yeah. especially if you know my thoughts on free will. So it really, <laughs> don't get them started. Don't get them started, anybody. Let so them keep talking. It, it really it really just comes down to you got to put the words in the right order, uh, whether that's logically or or using the right terminology to make it just click for that person to say, "Oh, yeah, mm. I get it." Oh, I, so I don't, I don't know if that answers it. George, I'll, I'll have you give the follow-up. What do you think? Bail me well, out, George. Um, Bail me out. Uh, when I was in college, I only took one philosophy course. And I'm, I'm aware there are different branches to the discipline of philosophy. Notice I just called it a discipline because the way what I picked up was that it was very much about logic. Hmm. In my, in my one semester of philosophy. No, I think it's, it's all based on logic. I mean, I think the underpinnings of all good psycho uh, philosophy would be logic. It's the tools of, of psycho philosophy and science. Um, you can't really make any headway without it. Uh, one of the problems I have with philosophy is uh, that Descartes uh, started off you know, with the most foundational logical conclusion that you can reach, we think therefore we exist, mm. uh, or I do. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I can't prove it. <laughs> way to but, way to throw us under but, the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, after he made that conclusion, he went off into never never land uh, with right. uh, spiritual beings and other realms right. that that are not conclusive. And not logical, if you ask me. But yeah. that's just me. Yeah, it seems like the best. Yeah, the best philosophy are the ones that co that are that cohere with logical entailments and stuff like that. Like yes, yeah, epistemology. Like um, that's a branch of philosophy, mm -hmm. but it's asking how do you know things, and it usually appeals to logic. If if how you know something isn't logical, then it opens up. A bunch of questions like, well, how do you know if it's not logical, if it doesn't, you know, and then there's other things like concrete, concreteness versus imaginary things. Like, how do we tell the difference <laughs> between imagination and the concrete? Like, logic is a mental, conceptual, in the category of imagination. That's what logic is. It's in your mind. Hmm. But then if it coheres with the concrete, or something we can actually point to in reality, then it makes a better philosophical argument. It's more sound versus yeah. just a valid conception. That is incredibly well said. I love that. I love like, it was like, <laughs> I like philosophy is better when it's rooted in logic, like it's enriched with logic. You can have sophistry, which I think in my opinion is philosophy sans logic. It's just like, this guy's just talking. That's your Jordan B. Peterson. That's your like guys who are like, and the crystal came from the mouth of the mammoth. It's like, oh, this guy's just talking. That's, yeah. that's just a person speaking. <laughs> Word salad. But yeah. when you get, when you get like a, uh, a doctorate, you get something called a PhD, which is a doctor of philosophy. Like that is a person who's studying very hard in the logistics and the logic and like the, the technical aspects of a field of science to the point where it's like, ah, 
good job, dude. Good job. Or good job, lady. Also <laughs> good job, whatever else we do. Well, exactly. sure. There are a lot of, there can be PhDs out there that issue word salad, but the, Oh the yeah, absolutely. The, the right. peer review, you know, of, of his ideas. I love it. And I love the peer I, review. I of, they, go for it. Go for it. A big component here is, is uh, uh, this person or that person versus lots of people who've, whose expertise goes way beyond themselves. Mm. And that's one thing I find very appealing about science is it's, it's yeah. really accumulation of knowledge. It's not, not a Nobel Prize winner here or the other Nobel Prize winner there. Yeah. Um, but when I think of logic, I, that's, that's my definition of logic. It has to come from many heads. Ooh, Otherwise, it's a team it pursuit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But, but yeah, to Ty's point, though, you know, you get someone who is good at the word salad, right? You know, the, the uh, Jordan Peterson was an example. I, they, they're they kind of like a preacher in a sense where they're convincing, right? They get on the stage and they 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 say these things. And again, it comes back to it clicks into people's heads. So charismatic, it, yeah. even though they're not peer reviewed and it's not like you don't take the words and 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 parse them out and, and, and exactly examine. I mean, some people do, but it doesn't matter because they've got, you know, a million followers on YouTube and they're right. They're changing people's minds. So I don't know. I don't know how you uh, combat that or fix it or improve it with logic That's a, well, <laughs> and education. with logic and education. What you, I, my opinion would be like the whole, the whole purpose of college, in my opinion, at least should be is to improve your critical thinking um, prowess and be able to parse bad information from good information, not be able to say, this is the good information I'm always keeping with myself and this is the bad, but be able to have the process to be able to distinguish the two. Mm. And that only comes through rigorous study where you are sent out into a field with us ask, being asked to solve something that your professors can't figure out or whatever. And it's like, I have all these you know, journals that I could read information from. Some are higher rated than others. Some are from authors who are just really popular in the field and maybe have high, less standards in terms of like, oh, but if we get this article from this professor, maybe our, our journal looks better, et cetera. So like you need to be able to see like, this is good information. This is a good test. This was done rigorously. This is a comprehensive analysis. This is not, this is just pop science. <laughs> this is just a nice picture, but there's no weight behind it. And I feel like those people who, who train themselves that way, and anyone can be trained that way, are the best kinds of mindsets for getting rid of the, the pulp culture philosophers that we have on TV. Or mm -hmm. what I also see is like athletes who get asked questions about things that are like, you know, like, what's your opinion about Bosnia? Uh, uh, what's what's LeBron James and LeBron James is like ah oh, uh, I think we should uh, I don't know like maybe he has an opinion on it but like should we is that the most well versed opinion that we should be listening to um, right. and like we should just be able to have an awareness of that I think everyone weighed in on that that was a really great that was a really really great comic ecocentric homestead we're gonna go on to Ashley Williams Ashley Williams <laughs> says hey Ty you're a microbiologist aren't you a man of science I mean you have a PhD. When are you guys going to do a show on this COVID vaccine? I mean, what better way to put science, logic, and proof together than that right now? And who better than you guys? LOL, asking oh. for a friend. Uh, that's so sweet. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so we actually did a show on COVID and vaccines. It was called, Can Spiritual Healing Save Us from COVID? And we did that back in November on the 22nd of November. You feel free to check out that video. Um, let's see. Another comment is, oh, it's a question. I'm going to direct to our new guest of honor, Buffalo George. Uh, he wants to know, scientists, okay, let me read this question. Do scientists only form um, consensus? I'm sorry. Do scientists ever form consensuses without demonstrability? So basically he's asking, can a scientist, can a bunch of scientists come into a room, come to a consensus about something, but not be able to demonstrate it? And has that ever happened in the past? Well, I think theoretical physicists do that all the time, uh, <laughs> and, and that's their that's their branch of science. But but really, there the purpose is to instigate experimentation to prove or disprove. Uh, but by and large, I don't think scientists do that. Mm. They uh, the, everyone looks at the data, and uh, and and decides whether or not you should go on from just something that's data driven to a uh, to a consensus and then to a paradigm right 
but again, the overlying thing that's going on there all the time is it's expected to be retested. You know, there, a couple of years ago, there was a good paper out on uh, challenging uh, Newton's, some of Newton's theories. Nice. And Einstein... Take uh, that, Newton. Even rel mm. relativ relativity theory was tested a few years ago in the peer-reviewed literature. And in both cases, both of those guys uh, um, came out uh, okay. But, okay. Uh, you know, it's, everything has to be based upon retest. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. He invented calculus at 20. I just want to, I want to see something right. like needle. I was like, come on, get him down here for someone. Could you imagine yeah. if Newton was in your like math class? He would be like the ultimate teacher's pet. He'd be like, yeah, I did all my homework. I did the whole book. It's like, oh, this guy. <laughs> but, but he wasn't, he wasn't one of the nicest people. I, I would like to add that. He's not my favorite scientist. You know what? He was very bad to some of his colleagues. Mm. I, listen, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Um, Sometimes, sometimes people are mean and deserve to and deserve to get away with it. <laughs> if, if their contribution's good enough, I don't care if Einstein parallel parks, you know, every couple of times or uses the. I don't care if you know Marie Curie uses the handicap parking space at Walgreens. It's like you can get away with that. Like I'm not gonna, I, I I'm not gonna hold you against. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Uh, however, <laughs> however, if it's impacting science and if it's, if oh, it's holding, sure. if it's holding back a, another good scientist that has a different view, then that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. T that's why Thomas Edison's in my um, 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 corner. Like you're in the bad room corner because he did that all the time. Boudreaux, uh, I saw your hand raised. What's up? Yeah. So uh, to chime in on what what the, the person was asking of the question and, and add to what George stated it's interesting and and i i don't know if others uh have this in their scientific community but in engineering you know i have civil engineering background and one of the things we do as researchers for traffic safety is something called an expert panel and i don't know if you guys have this as well but you get to a case where it's like you want to study you know 10 foot lane roads with a you know eight foot median and this type of shoulder uh, there's just not enough data to study it, right? We just you, so empirically, you cannot put a study together to study it. And with experts, when you review this and you discuss it, and you come to a consensus, and that consensus sometimes leads to some factor of safety that you can use to help design roadways, and that's uh, our statistician friends often look at that as kind of kind of scary and kind of us smuggling in some bias, but you know, what do you do? I mean, mm. there, you, you, I mean, you're, I think right now that's the best science we have. And admittedly it's not great science, but it's, it's better than a random number I would presume, but here's, it's, it's what we got. Here's, here's where I take slight umbrage. I actually think that's great science because what you are essentially doing is presenting a model that people can learn from and you're not saying it's absolute, you're saying, hey, we can improve this model, but that's what science does. It's like it says, this is our best guess of what things are right now, let's use this as a model, and, when, and we'll look for what doesn't work, and we'll change that in the future. But it's those yeah. foundational first steps that really make science a beautiful thing, because it's like, hey, we're building this on the premise of we can improve it. You know, Scott, you're in IT. Have you ever had an experience where like a bunch of IT guys came together and just came to a conclusion without I guess like, you know, hard data to support their conclusion, but they oh, needed yeah. to have to come up with something like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. All the time. Like, um, let's say if they're trying to roll out something like a, um, a program or something that's supposed to solve a problem and we've never done it before using this program or somebody creates an application to kind of like update computer systems, for example. Sure. And you know, they, you know, you'd kind of decide on a group of engineers are going to get together and they're going to decide what it should be, what it should look like, what we, what we want to accomplish and lay out your case. And then you come to a consensus and then you all agree that this is what we want to do. So let's go out and test it. So then they go and they test it. And if it works, then it, you know, then it, then they roll it out. And if not, then they go back to the drawing board. So it kind of starts off with some imaginary thing, you know, some imaginary, um, something logical, <laughs> something that seems to logically make sense. And if it logically makes sense, then they 
will come together and say, yeah, that, that's logical. That makes sense. Let's try it. And then they'll try it. And then it becomes a concrete thing. It becomes something we can say, hey, this actually works. You know, this is the, <laughs> so, Isn't that the there you go. <laughs> that's the greatest, that's the greatest quote in like all of science, whatever happens. It's been said by many people, but it's like, hey. This actually works. Oh, yeah. let's. Yay. No one's going to graduate. Yeah. Someone's getting yeah. papers and going to graduate. Hey, Larry, what do you think about think, this conversation? I think oh. sometimes, sometimes you just have to do your best and throw it out there and see what yeah. happens. You know, and, and then figure it, figure it out, figure out what you did mm -hmm. wrong. And, yeah. That's that's called improvise and surprise, and I love that motto in yeah. terms of science because, like, sometimes you, you said just something have to about. It out. You brought up Edison. What was that about? Edison was just a notorious jerk. <laughs> yeah, just like a well-known inhibitory to science jerk. Very good at putting his name on other people's ideas and yeah. just promoting himself very, very harshly. But like, yeah. you know, uh, hopefully history will shine some better light on that guy and the people who got overlooked as a result. But Larry, Unintended. what do you yeah. Oh, oh no, because he didn't invent the light bulb. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go, Larry. <laughs> Let's no. Go. Um, no, I was going to say that uh, a lot of people think that scientists will say something like, Eureka, I found it, you know, when they mm. find a new discovery. But it's yeah. generally something like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, then they, uh, they. I like to say, what do the six controls it? look like? What? Mm. What What do the six controls look like? Oh. Yeah. Mm. studies. So what, when, but, uh, when I was there, there's okay. a distinction between uh, uh, you're talking about experts earlier. A lot of people use the expert and authority in uh, the same vein. Uh, they have different definitions, and they should uh, people should be aware that an authority may not actually be an expert, and a, an expert may have no authority in certain right. areas. But that's something that a distinction should be made. That's all. What I also like about the scientific method is that it has like this almost golden religious almost it's it's appreciated at a higher esteem than it act one than what it actually is. Because it's not like one guy being like, I'm going to prove this. I came up with a hypothesis, I did a test, and I proved that. It's more of like I'm systematically documenting every step of this process so that if something like Larry said weird happens, I can backtrack, read all my mm. notes, figure out, oh, I expected this to, for this to happen, but something completely opposite happened. Can I use that for yeah, something? Like, like my chocolate bar, it melted in my pocket. What happened there? <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. How, uh, microwaves yeah. came about. You know, Tie this I, back into uh, religion. Yes. Uh, last week I had a conversation with a Christian and we were talking about science and they said, and she was trying to defend faith. Hmm. And so she was saying, well, even science uses faith. Yeah. And yeah, so I was kind of disagreeing that. with that. And she, and uh, she equivocation. Was kinda, yeah. She was yeah. equivocating the four core assumptions of science with faith because you know, the, the assumptions is there, there's a world out there. The world can be tested. You know, it, sure. it follows patterns and laws and things like that. But that's an equivocation because that's just basic inference. How did you handle really that equivocation in dialogue? How did you deal with it? Um, I just copy and pasted, you know, <laughs> uh, what science says about the core assumptions. That's Let her see what those core assumptions are. And then a philosophical, like from the Stanford Dictionary or Encyclopedia of Philosophy, hmm. to show the difference between inference and faith and different things like presuppositions and things like that. George, we'll get right to you. I would say like for, for me, I found it way more compelling, at least in a face-to-face -face conversation, because this sounds like it mm. won't happen like over Facebook. But to ask way. someone just three questions, these are from like my SC practices, but like, what do you mean by that? Like faith and science are the same thing. What do you mean by that? That's the first question. Let them say whatever they got to say. Get, let them define it in their own words and not just copy paste from some regurgitation. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. But once they really think about the words coming out of their mouth, they might change their, their story. Then ask, how can we test that? Because now they've just given you a claim and you can test it. And then the last question is, how reliable is that test? And through those three questions alone, I think you can get someone to really consider why they believe something that might sound weird to you without having to challenge them or throw out their logical fallacies in their face. Perfect, it, perfect. 
What do you mean by that? How can we test that? How reliable is that test? George, uh, why don't you take us out? You'll have the last comment before we end the show today. Well, I before we to destroy ask... Christmas for good, once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted. I just wanted to ask Scott. Did you? Was you? Were you successful? Did you change yeah. your mind yeah. on any? Did you change yes. your mind? Yeah, did she you... actually did. She she, she changed actually... her own mind. Yeah, she said, "Well, oh, okay, so." inference is different than faith okay i understand i think i understand you better it, it, i don't know if she changed her mind really but at least she acknowledged the information nice. i gave her because she was asking for citations or whatever so very cool so guys we're at the bottom of or at the top of the hour, top of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> george i'm gonna ask you a question because i asked you this last week and you said you'd look up something if you say absolutely nothing i'm going to be that sad but is there anything that you'd recommend that we check out over this next week um yes but i can't remember it <laughs> I'm with, all right work on it work on it i'm going around we'll go to you one last time okay. boudreau did you finish that song by the way i didn't well, it was still getting mixed um hey, but we should have it takes time should have it soon okay. um, no pressure but i will I tell you guys this um in the christmas spirit give well do 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 some charity uh, but but pay attention to what charities you use nice. and uh, find a charity that's that's effective and, and absolutely give that's very, very true. Uh, do you have any charities that you would recommend off the top of your head? I, honestly, I would go to GiveWell.com, and they they study all these charities and they find the most effective. It's it's a Sam Harris thing. I apologize for how he's plugging him, but uh, effective, effective altruism. Nice. Peter Singer, I guess, but effective altruism. It's it's uh, give give where it can do the most good. So, you know, since um, Black Lives Matter protests had started, I actually found some really great um, charities to donate to that basically give bonds to people who are in situations where like, I can't afford this bond. I can't afford another phone call from my parent. <laughs> I need help just like letting people know that I'm stuck in jail or anything like that. And I'm like in this local community and no one knows my name. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting against a police state at this point. It's like we, you can put in money into a, a, a ability to get those people at least you know to the bond hearing meetings faster so that before they lose their job and fall into a system where it's like for profit you know penitentiaries so yeah i, I found it's built well i can't call to action but i'll say look up stuff like that yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my go-to uh scott williamson dub shine <laughs> have you have you have anything that you would recommend that we check out um yeah so two things i would go to um an article for, about what is Christmas, understanding history and origins at crosswalk.com. That would be, nice. has a really interesting article about where Christmas came from, its origins and things of that nature. And then two, check out my uh, my music. You can, you can download music, go to dubshine.bandcamp.com and check out nice. and things of that nature. They're Dude, cool. I need to get a band camp. That's a great website. That's a nice website. Dubshine.bandcamp.com, right? That's it. Nice. All right. Buffalo George, anything you'd recommend that we check out over the next week? If we if we uh no, I guess I'll pass. Okay. That's totally fine. Dro Brooklyn George, getting a uh, getting a have you gotten the uh, epiphany that you're looking for? Yes, yes. Uh, nice. I've been looking looking into um what's called cluster B pers uh, uh, personality disorders. And I want to suggest that um, if you want to know what's called the, um, the dark triad in psychology, actually it's got more to it. There's more than three uh, mm -hmm. personality disorders, but you'll find of course one famous person on that map. And um, there are a couple others but um, they may they may have some importance in your own life nice very cool uh cluster i'll give a b shout out. personality disorders cluster b personality disorders give it a google um i'll give one shout out to my black brothers and sisters uh there's a game that's a star wars game hear me out don't don't close it yet don't hear that this is this is pretty good it is called star wars jedi fallen order i would recommend that you check it out i think if you buy it on epic right now I'm not saying do it but if you buy it on epic right now you can get it for like 10 bucks because <laughs> it is it's such a good game and epic puts out such great deals but like the idea of 
if you were disappointed with episode, what's the late? What was the what was the number of the last two Star Wars nine, movies? Number nine. If you were yeah, eight, disappointed nine. with number eight, if you're disappointed with number nine, I think if you played like just ten minutes of this game, you'll be like, oh, I get what Star Wars is supposed to be. Like, I understand the weight of it. I get the world now. It's not, it's not spoon fed to me and and so simplistic and just you know John Abrams explosions. It's like, oh, I can take my time and listen to this conversation. I can th- see myself get falling into this world and I want to explore it more. And I recommend that you check it out. Uh, black people technically not the biggest demographic of Star Wars fans. I say check this out, you guys. I'm challenging you. All right, Larry, what do you got? Well, my content is found on digitalfreethought.com. Uh, that's also where the blog is, the radio show archives, uh, atheist songs and articles on the subject. Uh, my book is called Atheism, What's It All About? All about. It's available on Amazon. If you have any questions for the shows or comments, you can send them to Ask an Atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. We'll answer them on future shows. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of new episodes are posted. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.